This, this is the Our Auto Expert Podcast. Find us on air, online, on mobile, and on your smart speaker. Please subscribe at ourautoexpert.com. Our Auto Expert. 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 Now, here's the host of Our Auto Expert. Our Auto Expert. Nick Miles. Locally created, nationally celebrated from the southeast to the northwest. This is America's Car Radio Show. If it has a throttle, we'll feature it online, on air, on smartphone and smart speaker. This is our auto expert, where two million Americans get their automotive news daily. I'm your host, Nick Miles, along with truck girl Jen. Um, We drove a truck in today. Yes, we did. Were you feeling better about that? You're not really that hot on them, the Jeep truck. No... I like it if I wanted a truck, but I want a Jeep wrangler. Yeah, I know. When you, you know. when you sit in it, it's just This year I'm trying to work out do I want a Bronco or a Wrangler? Or are they gonna introduce a three row Wrangler? Which I think they might. A Wrangler? Yeah. 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 I, I, I I'm not I like trucks. I have a truck to haul stuff around, but um I'm not a truck guy that has to have a truck. No. I like an SUV. Yes. Like most Americans. Because you have dogs. I do. And there's no way I'm putting a dog in the truck bed. Just exactly. telling you right now. It's exactly. never, ever going to happen in my home. Uh, we have an extremely packed show today. First of all, J.D. Power and Associates' initial quality award is out. And boy, mouth dropper. Um, it's not what we expected at all. It's usually pretty much the same every year, the same people at the top, the same people. Not this year. Big change. Just to give you a tease, Mitsubishi are in the top 10, which was like, uh, Mike Koval is going to join us. He is the head of Ram Trucks at Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, and we're going to talk about some special edition trucks. I'm very I'm, excited about these. I'm going to uh, suggest they're military special edition trucks. Uh, I'm going to suggest to him a special edition truck, too. So you probably want to hear what I have to say about that. A special edition truck. You always have a really good idea about uh, vehicles. He's (laughs) probably going to smack me. Uh, Patrick McKenna is going to be on the show. He's from Mini, and uh, there is a brand new Mini Countryman. We're going to find out all about the Countryman. I'm a little nerked at BMW. Is nerked a word? I'm I'm just making something up. I'm a little nerked at uh, Mini, BMW Mini, same company. Uh, because I just got a 2019 Countryman. Now they're coming out with another one. Ah. <laughs> okay, wait, of all, <laughs> all <laughs> people <laughs> in the world, you should know when a refresh or redesign's coming out. Yeah, shush. <laughs> Five years, Pee three years. Stop, shush. <laughs> Jeff Zerchmead joining us. Uh, Jeff is uh, from the Star Magazine, mm-hmm. and he's also from the Portland Tribune, and he is going to tell us what we need to remember as we get back up on the roads, um, because, you know, things have changed while you've been on home quarantine or whatever you've been in, Yeah, it was stay-at-home order. I called him and said, hey, this would be a really good segment for you, so I'm very excited. I think he's done a today. couple, uh, I've, seen, I've read a couple articles from him, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to talk about that J.D. Power and Associates Initial Quality Awards today. And oh, you're going to just mouth drop. Uh, the brand new uh, Buick Envision. Uh, we can get a little bit of information about that. Tiny. Teeny tiny. Teeny tiny bit because it's kind of a secret and the Buick just don't want to spill it. By the way, there was an F-150, new Ford F-150 revealed yeah, this we're week. we're going to talk about that too. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the Land Rover celebrating 50 years. Uh, Joe Stebel is going to join us. He's got an interesting history. He's worked for Infinity and Mercedes, so he must have a good perspective of the industry. But now he's at Land Rover. Mm-hmm. He's the public relations and communications manager. Uh, Anton's going to join us too. Uh, boy, in that initial quality award, this is the way they do it. They take, they do it per hundred cars. So how many complaints? Or there has been per 100 cars. So take 100 cars of one particular brand. How many complaints there's been about those 100 cars? So uh, the, the people at the top of the list have about 114 complaints per 100 cars. So it's 1.14. What? Oh, all right. Yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then Jen's telling me to hurry up. Hurry up, Nick. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, and then 
when you do that, the bottom of the list was Tesla. So we'll talk to yeah. him about it. All right. Let's, uh, let's dive into talking to Mike. Um, Mike Koval is the, uh, the new big cheese at Ram. He's in charge. He's in charge of making all the decisions. Uh, Mike, you have come up with five very cool vehicles to celebrate our military. Yes, Nick, that's right. Uh, the concept really behind the special edition is to honor those who have served and really those who are still currently serving with a very, very well-contented, high-value package using Ram's current built-to-serve tagline, which we feel has a really nice tie into the services. So uh, tell us the branches. There's five different versions, so tell us what those versions are. Is there, is there five? Am I correct in saying there's five? Yes. Okay. Yep, that's correct. So RAM is celebrating America's five, just like you said, land, sea, and air-based armed forces with what we're calling these built-to-serve editions. And it's based off the all-new RAM 1500 half-ton pickup truck lineup. And so the five, is that five different branches that you celebrate? So they presumably are uh, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and two others. <laughs> Correct. The, 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 the Marines and okay. the Coast Guard. Coast so, Guard. yeah, we, okay. we first came to market in November of 2019 with the addition that paid tribute to the men and women of the Army. And that had two special colors, like they all do, Gator and Diamond Black. That first edition was limited to 1,000 total units, Nick. Wow. And it sold so well that we had to go back to our friends in supply chain <laughs> and ask, <laughs> ask for double the volume uh, for the rest of the services. So most recently, we just came to market with the uh, naval theme uh, that just launched uh, on Flag Day just a couple of weeks ago. Jen's very happy about that because her, her son's uh, an ex-Navy mm -hmm, guy. Is. So would you, would you buy this, Jen? Mm -hmm. uh, or is it, Mike, is this available for non-service people to purchase? Wonderful question, and the answer is yes. Many times when we come to market with a special edition, we do like to keep the overall volumes limited just to maintain that air of exclusivity. But yes, in this particular case, the built-to-serve editions are available for anyone to purchase, and they're available across the entire range of cabs, trims, and propulsion systems as well. So you get you get the truck you kind of want, you get the size, you get the sort of engine that you want, and then is it just purely an aesthetic look to the vehicle, or does it come contented out? No, very well contented. Let me just give you a couple of bullet points on the exterior. First, every edition comes with unique 20-inch uh, aluminum wheels with a, a unique technical refinish and body color wheel flares also that help accent the exterior. Uh, they also get a, uh, uh, a, a unique treatment consisting of an all-black grille and surround, black bumpers and black bezel premium lighting as well. So it gives the exterior a very sharp, very impressive uh, look to it. And then from the interior, in the case of the Naval Edition, it comes with a special, uh, unique uh, color stitching. In this case, it's called Light Ambassador Blue, a very classy stitching that really makes the seat itself pop. But really, when you get into the – and underneath the hood, you really see how well – uh, these particular vehicles are. And they're ready for action, Nick. They are loaded with 4x4 off-road gear, including all-terrain tires, electronic locking rear axle, tilt descent control, heavy-duty off-road calibrated front and rear shock absorber. So it's a great-looking truck with all of the off-road shops that you expect in a Ram 1500. One of the things that I really like that you've done, Mike, is that you didn't, like, overdo it. So when I think of built-to-serve edition, I think of giant American flags and big red <laughs> wheels and, you know, huge fender flares. No, they're actually subtly very beautiful. Uh, they're very sort of undercover. They're very, a lot of blacked out, like, cool stuff on them. And then when you take a glance closer up, there's a little American flag by the tail lights. There's a, a nice built to serve flag on the inside of the seats. So you sort of held back. You didn't go big and gaudy. It actually looks really cool and it doesn't scream, hey, I'm in the military. And that was it was absolutely by design. And we had to be careful because this is I, I this was an authentic attempt and that's who we are the brand. We're a humble brand. And this was a true authentic way that we felt we could connect with the men and women who serve our country with distinction. And to your point, one other thing I wanted to point out on the interior, we do allow for additional customization. And you may know that uh, each built-to-serve edition uh, comes with uh, um, 
uh, inboard Velcro panel. So on each yeah. front seat inboard shoulder, pad, you can, so you can actually apply your own, your own patches, whether they're regimental cool. flags, uh, or slogans. And it really helps with the personalization as well. But yes, it was a very classy, subtle way again, to, to, to give thanks and to pay tribute. Now, just a question. You don't have to answer this if you're uncomfortable answering it. Do you think if you got pulled over speeding in this that they'd let you off? <laughs> I think your chances are better than not. <laughs> and then, and then, of course, you guys offer the military incentive program as well. Yes, we do. Uh, we have a $500 uh, special military incentive that's above and beyond all other applicable incentives. And just recently, at the turn of the year, we've now expanded that to include all first responders and healthcare workers as well. That's awesome. Um, I really like it. All right, starting price of the special edition trucks. Uh, starting price of the special trucks. Now, these are all built off of the Bighorn price class, so you can start at uh, forty two nine ninety five. All right, that's not bad for a nice big Ram fifteen hundred truck. And then, of course, depending on how you want to deck it out and how mm -hmm. crazy that you want to go, uh, are they available? Now? Are there stocks? Are there still stocks of these? And are they available from local dealers? Or how's that working out? Yes. So there's two things you can do. Certainly, you can visit your local Ram dealer, or you can visit us at Ram dot com for more information. But yes, I think there are a few uh, Army editions out there right now that may still be in stock. And as I mentioned to you a moment ago, we just opened up ordering for the most recent edition, which was to pay tribute to the Navy. So those are now available for order through your local Ram dealer. Have you ever thought about doing a newscaster edition, which would have bigger mirrors in it, maybe a hairspray holder? Well, <laughs> we're, we're constantly uh, we're constantly looking at uh, new and creative things back in our lab. For sure. It's probably a little too creative. Um, let me guess, a green screen yes, in a, the back. Yes, a pull-down green screen in the back instead of a sunshade, or maybe the roof or anything. Mike Corval from Ram Trucks. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Uh, I hope to see you again soon. Texas State Fair was the last time I saw you. Maybe that'll creep up as soon as COVID gets over. All right, more to come. Our Auto Expert Radio Show. Stand by. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Catch up with previous episodes of the show at our website, ourautoexpert.com. You can hear past shows, see our automotive videos, and read insider car stories about your next ride. Our Auto Expert is where 2 million Americans, 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. You'll find it all at ourautoexpert.com. You know I'm a mini guy. Like, I've been on Mini Takes Estates twice. I, uh, I, I have a Mini in my driveway, which is part of my pride and joy, my Mini Countryman, John Cooper Works. So Mini are just messing with my head when they come out with a new Countryman. And don't because, forget what I just got you. Oh, you've got a mini, mini Mouse, too. A, Get mouse, it? a, mini, a mini Mouse, mouse. Huh. with yeah. a... Union Jack flag. Uh, um, but it's the Minnie Mouse is cool. I'm not sure Minnie Mouse is cool, but the Minnie Mouse is cool. The Mouse of uh, Minnie. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so you, you right-click and left-click on a mini to uh, to navigate around your computer. Uh, <laughs> so I think Minnie are just messing with them when they come out with a new countryman because they know I'm going to have to buy mm -hmm. one. So they, stick, they go, ah, oh, Nick my <laughs> Let's wait okay. till he buys one. <laughs> then release it. <laughs> yeah, then, then we'll do a new one. Uh, Patrick McKenna joining us on from, on the phone. Patrick, of course, is the big cheese over at Minnie. Uh, Pat, what's new for this? It, I guess it will be a 2021 uh, new Mini Countryman, right? It will be a model year 21. Great to be with you. It goes into production in just a few days on July 21st. And the nice thing is it's, it gives you six different versions, right? Everything from entry-level Cooper up to, you know, your top-of-the-line John Cooper Works. Um, what we've done is we've we've made LED lights standard on it. So nice. we've, we've done away with the halogen lights. But something you as a Brit will absolutely need to get are the Union Jack taillights. Yeah, uh, so I'm, I see it all the time. <laughs> like, uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of convertibles, mainly because it has to be like 80 degrees for me to put the top down. But ultimately, I Lame. love the Union Jack convertible top, and I've seen the mini convertible taillights on many vehicles. So finally, they come to the Countryman. Uh, this is also the biggest mini in the fleet, too. It is indeed. So it's the, uh, it's the big mini, as we like to say. Right. Um, still, still small by American standards. And you know, super nimble, fun to drive. Uh, we've made it look a little bit more rugged, so there's a little bit more. So we've redone the bumpers. We've introduced some new colors. 
Uh, we have an, a digital instrument cluster on the inside. That's an update. Nice. Uh, some amazing interiors, indigo blue and malt brown. So I think really stunning interiors. Uh, so it's it's really a, a really nice freshening for for the countrymen. I like the in the blue interiors. When you first came out with, um, when was the first blue interior I remember seeing? It, w- it would have been the the uh, the clubman. Yes, had the burgundy exterior. Yes, and the indigo blue interior. That was my last mini before this one. And I really, oh, really yeah. like that. I like that an awful lot. In fact, I went and had the wheels painted in the same colors, mm-hmm. the blue and the burgundy. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, Pat over yeah. at Wheelcraft. Powder-coated. Yeah, he did a really good powder coating job on the wheels, and they look really... Except it was a very expensive uh, job when my spouse curbed it. <laughs> I had to have it replaced. Well, to I get was... the matching it had to be, take a while, too. Yeah, well, because, of course, I'm being cheap, I didn't do the spare. <laughs> so it wasn't like I could just swap it out. Uh, what else is new for the 2021 Countryman? So that's that's it on the uh, basically on the exterior, some interior elements. And one of the other things that we did is we clearly see that Apple CarPlay is important to people. Yeah. So we've actually brought the price down significantly on that. So there's some value propositions uh, in the car as well. But coming back to those LED headlights, it's just they give the car a really distinctive look by day and certainly by night. Um, and I think the to, to, to kind of do away with the halogens for this car, you know, really distinct-looking interior. We've updated some of the uh, electronics in the car as well. Um, but those interiors, I think those will be really surprising to people. The other thing is we have something called an Oxford Edition. So that's out right now in the model year 20. That brings our starting price down to twenty five nine, hmm. uh, which it has got some limited uh, options, but it's a great way for someone to get into the brand uh, at this kind of entry level. I and think, we'll be bringing that back in a few months on the model year. I think I went and looked at what it would cost the Oxford edition to uh, to actually put all that extra stuff on the vehicle. And there's quite a substantial savings. If I, what comes automatically with the Oxford edition is uh, it is it's almost in some cases like five thousand dollars worth of kit depending on quite how you kit the vehicle out but it's a lot you get a lot extra and you don't you're not really paying for it are you you're not and and the thing you know the thing that all car companies i think uh struggle with a bit is just the amount of money spent on sales incentives so the way we're able to pass on this savings is simply saying this is a cash only car you bring your own financing you bring your own money uh, and that's where the discounting really comes, uh, and it's really like it's it's our way of just trying to put in, you know, for those for those buyers who want to get into the brand, it gives them a little bit more of an option. So it's it's a nice it's a nice element. And we used to have it where it was just students and military personnel, but now we're expanding the program, so we've kind of opened it up for we call it Oxford for all. Oh, I like that. That's awesome. Um, what's the transmission options in the in the new uh, in the new uh, Countryman? So uh, you and I have spoken quite a bit about manual. So in the full lineup, it's important to preface we have eight models with manual transmissions. On the Countryman, we just don't see the take rates for okay. manual transmission too much. So we don't have it. We are bringing it back to the Clubman in the Cooper S. Uh, but in the Countryman, we were seeing take rates sometimes as low as 1%, and it's okay. really hard to bring uh, bring it there. We've got some fantastic uh, dual-clutch transmissions on yeah. the Cooper and Cooper S, and then the 301 horsepower, 301 horsepower top of the line, John Cooper Works, uh, that gets the 8-speed automatic. So, the, And I have to say, the automatics have just come such a long way in terms of they're super responsive, uh, you know, just lightning fast uh, response. Uh, Plus, if shifting and downshifting, if you have to sit in traffic ever, I mean, I love my mini manuals when I drive them, 
but I I don't want to own one because I drive in stop and go traffic enough that it I uh, just my right leg would be twice the size of my 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 yeah my right leg my left leg would be twice anyway one of my legs would be <laughs> twice the size well it depends how you shift uh, it would be twice the size Patrick McKenna from Mini uh, can't wait to see it in person um, I know it's being produced very soon brand new Mini Countryman for 2021 with all that new gear and of course check out the Oxford editions all right more our auto expert on the way. You're listening to the R Auto Expert Podcast. All right, this is our Auto Expert Radio Show. Here's our Auto Expert, of course, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can start a conversation with us, ask us questions about buying a car, just direct messages at Our Auto Expert. It's where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. Welcome to our 19 stations, adding new stations all the time. Of course, uh, we Look forward to announcing more stations as well in the next few weeks or so. Interesting to know that Florida's now listening, which is kind of exciting to me. So we're in Florida, we're in Maine. Uh, we're in uh, almost every... Every corner of the United States. Yeah, we are <laughs> definitely in every corner of the United States. California, uh, there's a lot of places that we're in. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, getting back on the road again. Um I have had this experience. I had covers on some of my vehicles and uh, didn't have them on trickle chargers because when you have uh, seven, you need seven trickle chargers in your driveway. (laughs) It starts to be a little ridiculous. Uh, Soon I won't have that problem, though. Do you have the 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 trickle charger serger? (laughs) I have. Well, motorcycles have to be kept on trickle chargers. Right. And now I have trickle chargers for... Um, Did you have to hire an electrician to upgrade your No, no we, we just had a new panel put in the garage. Anyway, Jeff Zerschmidt <laughs> is joining us uh, to talk about getting out on the road and uh, new driving some new vehicles uh, or driving your vehicles while it's been uh, undercover, I guess. Um, Jeff, I did notice something interesting. When I, I had my Lexus GX um, under a cover for about six months and... The battery was flat, of course, because I didn't have it a trickle charger. I was kind of expecting that, so I got it started. But interesting enough, both key fobs were flat as well. I don't know if you ex- ever experienced that. Both key fobs, the batteries being out because you you didn't. Oh yeah, yeah. So they'll the... they'll go flat. I mean the the key fob, especially if they're the kind that um, that that where the the car automatically unlocks as you walk up to it. Yeah. Um, you know, there's always a little bit of drain on those, and so they go they go flat. And also the um, the batteries, if you use tiles, uh, those little uh, those little key fob yeah. uh, add-ons that, that help you locate your keys, which is always a problem for me, uh, those batteries will go flat. You can throw the keys with your tile in your drawer, and three months later, you need to replace the batteries again. I can't wait until we get the you know the adaption of every cell phone being able to uh, run a car because that you yeah. Know, I mean, I know weird. Apple just announced that they're doing that, um, so. Uh, I hopefully we'll be able to find some way of actually marrying that to the car, uh, even yeah. though if you bought a car that doesn't have that, perhaps someone will make it aftermarket thing. So, what are the things we need to remember, Jeff? Well, the main things uh, you, you already hit my item number one. Uh, it's the battery. Uh, you want to either throw it on an overnight charger if that's the kind of charger you have, um, or keep it on a uh, on a trickle charger. I, I like the Battery Tender brand. Uh, you can get them in in any Fred Meyer or auto parts store. And they're about forty bucks, and they work really well, uh, keeping your your battery nice and uh, and and full when for when you do go to start the car, um, or you can have a jump start ready, you know, or one of those uh, you know starting bricks uh, that they've got now, um, you know. But that's one. the main thing is that battery is going to be going to be flat if you haven't been driving for a while. You know, a lot of the big uh, luxury cars or the more expensive newer cars don't do well if they go flat because they have so many computers on board. Right. There's so much stuff that's controlled in that, um, you know, uh, and from from uh, uh, car alarms to, uh, to the, the clock and the stereo and all of the uh, smart features of the car. Yeah, you don't want to let a, a new car go flat you can possibly avoid it. Uh, another thing is uh, the gasoline in your tank, especially if you put your car away with a quarter tank in it. You want to fill that up with fresh gas as soon as you can um, after you've restarted the car and started driving again. And when you go to fill it up, uh, be sure to check your tire pressures. That's another thing that just slowly over time, uh, your tire pressures will drop. 
and uh, you're going to want to make sure that those are, are aired up to the, the proper temperature or pre- temperature pressure, which you will find on a little sticker um, in the driver's side door jam, the correct air pressure for your car. I did actually, um, I did find a really cool gadget on Amazon, which I think is was very, very clever, is actually the tire pressure monitor. So you can stick it in there and see what the uh-huh. actual pressure of the tire, if you don't have a car that monitors from it, it, it from internally. But it also uh-huh. gives you the tire depth gauge. So you can just push oh, that yeah. against the tire. And it, and it was like $11. So I, I bought one of those. I thought that was kind of cool. It's two in one. And, uh, and it's electric, too. So that was kind of cool. Uh, one other thing to think about the first time you drive your car, I mean, we, we went into quarantine, it was still winter, right? It was still raining and cold and snowing in some places. And so you want to, um, test the brakes a couple times before you have to stop, you know, for in a, in a serious way, uh, because rust and, and inactivity is, is not kind to your brakes either. Um, the, the rotors rust and things can gum up in the, uh, in the hydraulics. And so you want to just make sure you give those brakes a little, a little tap, um, and, uh, you know, with plenty of space, uh, the first couple times. And then, uh, also run your car through the car wash because, uh, all spring dust and pollen have been crusting on the outside of your car. And that's not great for the paint, but mainly it's about the rubber seals. It's about the seals that are going to keep the uh, water out of your trunk and out of your, uh, Uh, from coming in at the doors. Uh, So you want to just give your car a really good wash to get all of that gunk off that's been accumulating all spring. And at the same time, uh, give it, give the interior a good vacuuming, Um, clean out all the trash. You might have, you know, um, uh, you know, fast food bags in there from February (laughs) and, and you're going to want to get all that cleaned out. And if it's, uh, if if you do find that you have uh, winter odors, as we call them, in the car, um, you might want to think about taking it out and ha- asking for an interior detailing, the kind where they pull the seats out, uh, shampoo the carpets, uh, really you know, clean and freshen up that interior. Uh, it does wonders for your car. Jen's looking, finally, Je- Jen's looking down at this point. What is your car? Yeah, is yeah. your car nasty on the inside, Jen? No. She keeps a little trash bag inside <laughs> the car, but then she doesn't have any room for anyone to get in the back seat. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. Because I have all uh, my emergency stuff. So I've got oil in there. I've got winter wiper fluid. I've got, y- you name it, sleeping, bottled water. Sleeping a bag. bad, yeah. cat food, cat litter. You never know when you're uh, going to get teddy stuck. Teddy bears. In, yes, okay, I do, I do have <laughs> a teddy bear in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. And that leads into the last thing I wanted to say, which yeah. is um, when, you're, when you're doing all this freshening up, this is a really good time to restock your car with stuff that we didn't need in February, but we need now. Um, you want to get a pack of, of antiseptic wipes um, and put those just in the console uh, because they're good for if you have to wipe down an ATM screen that you're going to go visit because your bank lobby isn't open. Uh, wipe down the credit card before you hand it to a, uh, an attendant or anything or the fast food place uh, and wipe it down again when you get it back. Um, Wipe down the handles of the fuel pumps when you go to gas up your car or the, the recharge handle uh, if you're driving an electric. Or you could go um, to Oregon or New Jersey where they'll pump the gas for you, just saying. Well, well yeah, but then you still got to <laughs> hand the guy your credit card. I always keep um, oh, no, 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 anyway, Lysol. So you put those antiseptic wipes in your, in your console where they're convenient and throw in a few masks and some hand sanitizer so that they're in your car. I mean, I've found that I... I, I decide, oh, yeah, I'm going to stop at the grocery store. And it's like, oh, they're requiring masks. Right. I, did I bring one? You know, so I, I just I have a few of those, you know, blue hospital masks um, that I just keep in the console of my car now. Yeah, perfect. And and also your shopping bags. Don't forget to put those in the bag. And, because... and do shopping bags <laughs> if you live in Oregon, yes. No, it depends. There's some lots of places now, California now requiring you to either pay for bags or, or bring them to. That's my that's the one thing I forget because I change through the press cars all the time. I forget to put in the press cars. It's always shopping to bags. Me just yesterday. Yeah, just see? yesterday. I was out in the press car that I've got this week. Um, which is a Toyota Camry hybrid, which if you haven't had it yet, um, make sure you, you ask Drive Shop to get it to you. It's awesome. Yeah. I, I just got out of the Toyota Camry TRD, and I have to tell uh-huh. you that that is a whole bunch of fun. 
Like I didn't yeah. expect a Camry to be that exciting. So I hope the the hybrid is as exciting. The, the, you know something? Because I don't, I'm not driving anywhere. And I, you maybe it's different for you because you're out on the coast and you drive into the city, which is by an hour and a half. And you probably do that at least once a week, maybe more. The the longest trip I do is about 14 miles round trip. That's to go visit my father-in-law. So that's in a week. The longest trip. Most of mine are like one mile, two mile trips. And I'm trying to find excuses. And then I have, you know, my own personal vehicles and motorcycles that need exercising every day. So uh, I'm fine. I, you know, I find myself going to the store an awful lot for, you know, a pen. Or... <laughs> oh my gosh! And don't forget the Lysol. I keep a, a can of Lysol in my truck, and from coming in and out of different atmospheres, let's just say different locations, I always like spray down the inside of my truck and my clothes with just, Lysol. Yeah. Yes. I like that. I like you to be sprayed down before you come into the studio, too, Jen. <laughs> it's, it's just something I like to have done. I'm gonna uh, spray you back, <laughs> Jeff. If you uh, if if you're heading out on a trip, how early do you think you know, or heading out onto the road for the first time, how early do you think you should get this car stuff sorted out? Oh, uh, at least a couple days beforehand, because if the battery's flat, you'll need at least an overnight to recharge it. Um, and then, you know, it's a good idea to just sort of get out, do a few couple short trips, test those brakes, get that fuel freshened up, um, you know, do anything else that needs doing and uh, and get everything cleaned up before you have to drive your car. And you so also, at least give yourself 48 hours. And you were saying also check for leaks, too. Is that correct from seals? You know, yeah. It's been yeah. You want to make time. sure that, that, that um, you know, if the if the door seals have been leaking, you might have a, a pretty serious mildew going in the car. Mm, sounds delicious. Uh, Jeff, where can we read the majority of your stuff? Uh, you can always find me at the Portland Tribune. Uh, that's uh, portlandtribune.com. Look down the right-hand side, click on Wheels, and uh, you can find me uh, at uh, autobytel.com and uh, a variety of other places that change even as the weather. Jeff me <laughs> thanks for being on the show. <laughs> You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Your smart speaker can be your very own radio show. Just say, hey, Google, hey, Alexa, or hey, Siri, play our auto expert radio show. All the previous episodes of the podcast are available. Hours of endless fun await you. I'm Nick Miles, and this is our auto expert radio show. Two million Americans get their automotive news daily from our auto expert. Uh, I have been enjoying driving the Jeep Mojave, by the way, which is a Gladiator, which is the Jeep. It's like the Wrangler truck. But the Mojave is the first ever desert rated Jeep uh, branded vehicle. It has extra traction, desert prowess, uh, prow- prowess. So it looks very like, you know, cool in the desert. Uh, ride control stability, maneuverability, <laughs> ground clearance, everything you need to go through the sand at speed. And I have all of those things. Don't forget I the just f- don't have the desert. Don't forget the Fox. Shocks. Yeah, Fox. Yeah, I mean, it has Fox shocks. It has. Mm-hmm. Um, it has uh, axle there, lockers, rear axle only locker. It has the ready to roll. Yeah. Uh, it distinctive, stunning interior with Mojave typed across the or stitched across the seats. It has Mojave across the sides. I mean, it looks great. Uh, and, and I would tell you that I like the Mojave. By the way, I saw another Jeep Gladiator pass me on the street yesterday and the I flashed my lights to be cool, and and the guy who was driving the Jeep Gladiator was like, yeah, just give me the little salute, like the nod. <laughs> I was like, is that the cool thing that Jeep? When I drive my when I drive when I ride my motorcycles, <laughs> and I come up on another rider, like the you know everybody I, waves. No, they don't wave. You've got to, Jen. You're clearly not cool. Oh, you just you, stick you, your hand. No, out. you drop your hand. Drop like your hand. You take your hand off the handlebar and you just drop it by your side. Oh, that's so now Jeep so Harvey cool. people, I guess it's the like the, the yeah salute. The, the single finger the salute, salute. salute. Done the top anyway. Uh, cool vehicle. <laughs> um, uh, it's a little tall for me though. I Have to say, getting in and out of it, but that's a whole different short man story. So, JD Power and Associates came out with their initial quality uh, awards, which shows the dependability on trouble-free technology of new vehicles. Uh, the JD Power and Associates initial quality awards 
really takes a look at updated look at the problems owners have with their new vehicles, including those related to new technology. The iconic study redesigned this year uh, measures the components that fail and features that are difficult to use, hard to understand or don't work in ways which new owners have trouble with them. It's been a benchmark uh, survey that's been around for 34 years, and now uh, the new results are out for 2020. I will tell you, just it's they, the way they measure it, Jan, is they, they do it complaints per 100 vehicles. So the big news is, and congratulations to Dodge, uh, Dodge get number one in this survey, uh, along with Kia. So they are joint position number one. Uh, then in the number two position, two and three, uh, sorry, well, I guess it would be three and four. four. That's uh, Chevrolet and Ram. Ram oh, trucks, we just have Mike Coval on. Then Buick, GMC, Jeep, and Cadillac all made it above the median line, well, which is amazing. Was it, do you get Genesis in there? That's yeah, so if you want to go down the list. Yeah, uh, that's right below Ram. Yeah, you go down the list. It goes Dodge, Kia, Chevrolet, Ram, Genesis, and number five. And then the number one luxury brand mitsubishi are next which is like hello wow. didn't expect that uh-uh. uh, buick gmc volkswagen hyundai jeep lexus seems a bit far down for lexus they had 159 complaints per 100 vehicles nissan and cadillac and that is all that made it above the industry average the average was 166 complaints did you see who's under the line infinity shocker Ford, uh, Ford, Mini, BMW, Honda, Toyota, Lincoln, Mazda, Acura, Porsche, Subaru, Chrysler, Jaguar, Mercedes, know, right down by whoa. the bottom, Volvo, Audi, Audi are one step up from the bottom, and Land Rover at the and very bottom. And my favorite is at the bottom, well, where it so should be. We, we should, we should, we have to say <laughs> something about this because it's a little complicated, right? So Tesla is the very bottom with 250 complaints per 100 cars. That's two and a half complaints for every 100 cars on Teslas. But here's the deal. They're not officially in the survey because they block, uh, in 15 states, they block their information being known, which they can legally do. So they can't illegally push them into the survey, but the survey does show us that they, so the very bottom of the list, the Land Rover, they have 2.28 complaints per uh, vehicles, 228 complaints per 100 vehicles. Uh, Tesla, 250 complaints or uh, problems, not complaints, but problems, problems. <clears throat> with uh, per vehicles. So let's talk about individual vehicles. The Chevy Sonic is the highest initial quality model. Uh, the top three uh, out of the top three segments. Well done, Chevrolet. Small cars, uh, the highest ranked is the Sonic, of course. Audi 3 in premium cars. Kia Forte, compact. In the compact sporty cars, the Hyundai Velosta uh, ties with the Mini Cooper. Not a surprise there. Uh, when you get down to compact cars, the Lexus IS. Um, sorry, the Genesis G70 is, is the top there. Mid-sized cars, the Chevy Malibu, interesting, which is not made anymore. Uh, Ford Mustang is in the mid-sized sporty cars. When you get to mid-sized premium cars, the Cadillac CT5, CT6 in the mid-sized cars. Uh, the highest ranked large car was the Nissan Maxima, and premium was the BMW 8 Series. And you get into uh, the study of top three models in the segment for SUVs. It was Kia Soul, Jaguar E-Pace one in its category. When you go to compact SUVs, it was the Tucson Premium XT4 from Cadillac. The Murano won the midsize SUV. Uh, the Premium SUV was the Lexus GX, which I happen to own. So that was the winner in that category. When you look at midsize SUVs, the Kia Sorento. Premium SUVs, BMW X6. Huh, like that one too. Uh, large SUVs, the Nissan Armada had the least complaints, and the premium SUVs, the Cadillac Escalade. So it's really interesting. I mean, there's a lot of other vehicles in there. Wait a minute. You missed the trucks. I haven't got there yet. Oh, okay. Sorry. Got so excited. Uh, Minivans, Sedona, Ford Ranger, Tundra, and Super Duty won in their categories. Um, And go on. You want to do the trucks, Jen? Do the trucks. No, go ahead. You just did. I'll let you do it. Go. You just did. Get, Get you to it. You just did it. All right. (laughs) 
I thought you wanted to do it. No. Just saying. You know. <laughs> Uh, anyway, General Motors uh, factory in Dong uh, in Yantai Dongyang uh, was the best factory, uh, but also Fiat Chrysler, Ford Chrysler Automobiles, and Toyota won for their factories as well. So that's how the initial quality looks. I mean, it's only ninety days of the study, but a bit of a shocker how the table looks. I mean, I didn't expect to see some yeah. of those those, especially uh, Dodge. It's great for them. The first American brand to ever get number one and share that with Kia. But down the bottom, Tesla. I'm sure Anton Warm will have something to say about that when we get to his segment later on in the day. All right. Still an awful lot coming up in the show. Stand by. We're going to talk about Buick, their brand new Encore GX. And we're going to find out a little bit about their new Envision. We can't tell you much, but we can get some info from Rob Peterson. That's all on our Auto Experts. Stand by. You're listening to the Our Auto Expert Podcast. Locally created, nationally celebrated from the northwest to the southeast, this is America's Car Radio Show. If it has a throttle, we'll feature it on air, online, on smartphone, or on smart speaker. This is America's Car Radio Show, where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. I'm your host, Nick Miles, along with truck girl Jen. I am, uh, of course, I'm always excited when brand new vehicles are unveiled, but I'm even more excited when uh, they fill a white space or a hole that uh, is not being filled right now. And that's exactly what Buick are doing. Rob Peterson joining us from Buick. He is the marketing manager for the Encore GX. So Buick is having uh, some bumper time with announcing new vehicles, Rob. Uh, First of all, you have this and then you have you've been teasing some Envision pictures on the web as well. Uh, when, when do we get to find out more about the Envision? Are you guys holding that back for another few weeks? Yeah. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Jen. Um, good morning. Yeah, we'll be holding that. We'll be holding that information for a little while. But um, to your point, it's a very exciting time for us at Buick. Uh, the Encore GX came out earlier this year, and then we just announced that we have the uh, Envision and. Um, you know, we have a few other things in the hopper as well that are very exciting as well. So a uh, really good time for us here at Buick. And um, we think we're coming at the market at the right time with the right vehicle as well. And also you just got a, an award for um, the, the plant that makes the Envision as a platinum award from J.D. Power in their uh, in their initial quality study. So that's that's yeah. pretty good to the quality of Buick's, right? Absolutely. And that particular plant has actually been an award-winning plant in J.D. Power's study for three consecutive years. Congratulations. They started out as the bronze. They won the silver in their, third, in their second year, and now they're the platinum manufacturer out of the Asia-Pacific region. Um, they do a fantastic job of manufacturing the vehicle. Uh, they pay a great deal of attention to the detail of the vehicle. Um, we've been very pleased with, um, with their support that we've had from them. All right, let's turn our eyes to the Envision, uh, sorry, to the uh, Encore GX. So uh, obviously arriving early this, arrived early this year. Explain to us a little bit how the vehicle's posi- uh, positioned because initially you see the word Encore and you go, oh, the GX must be a trim level of the Encore. But well, that's not necessarily true, is it? Absolutely. So, I mean, the, really the Encore GX start story really begins with the um, current Encore. Um, We launched that vehicle in 2013. At the time, there were really only two competitors in the segment along with the uh, Encore. And we've been able to grow year over year in that particular segment, the small SUV segment. Um, You know, fast forward to where we are today, that segment represents over a million units of volume in the industry. Um, And Encore has one of the highest name recognition amongst consumers uh, for vehicles that are there. Um, you know, we briefly talked about the upcoming Envision, but the current Envision has been in our portfolio for a while. But there was really a space in between the Encore and the Envision. And the reason I say this is that if you take the small segment, the small SUV segment, and you combine it with the compact SUV segment, nearly a third of all vehicles in the industry are sold in that range. Um, the Encore GX slides between the Encore and the Envision. And it gives us three vehicles, highly competitive vehicles, right at the heart of the marketplace. Um, and then it also allows us to use the name recognition from the Encore uh, to kind of bring customers in and get them familiar with an all-new vehicle. 
So the step up from the regular encore, or let's just say the initial encore, is size, really. That's where we're talking about. We're talking about it's kind of a bigger you know, version of the encore, but probably, I'm going to guess, with all the things that we know and love about the encore. Um, yeah, in, in fact, a little bit more, quite frankly. You know, for, um, for this one, it's lower, uh, it's wider, and it's a little bit longer. Uh, when the first encore came out, um, you know, one of the analysts coined it as a, as a very cute roller skate. Um, the new one kind of comes in and fits in the middle there and really gives it a, a great personality, some great lines to it. Um, gives it the same functionality in sp- inside, maybe a little bit more. But what we learned from the first generation Encore is that there's a couple things that really attract this particular customer to that particular segment. And those are uh, safety technology, advanced technologies, and specifically connectivity. So for this vehicle, on the safety side, we have something that we're launching. This is the first Buick that has it. It's called Buick Driver Confidence. It's six active safety features, which includes things like uh, uh, forward emergency braking, and telebeams, side blind zone alerts, um, those types of features. Um, but in addition, it also has a great po- technology portfolio of active features, such as inside rearview mirror camera, um, heads-up display, uh, 360 camera, things along that line that make it kind of techy. But most important, and I think this is where we really kind of shine, is in the connectivity space. We have, uh, you know, we have both, um, we have uh, the ability to connect from the car to your Alexa to give commands into your home. We can also pair two cell phones at the exact same time. Nice. So there's no more of this bickering between husband and wife or two people trying to see who gets the connectivity. So we've taken care of that. And then we also have a great infotainment system that is, you know, supported with um, OnStar and things along that line. So we really believe that we've rounded out the technology features that will help us win in this particular segment, um, both the the ones that you experience during driving, but also remaining connected to what you want to be doing in life. How, uh, How capable is it? Because I see pictures of it. In a, in a sort of semi off roady setting like uh, dirt tracks and that sort of thing. So does it come in all-wheel drive as well? It does come in an all-wheel drive. Um, I would say that its, its mannerisms are best served on, um, you know, in urban settings, not necessarily as an aggressive off-roader. Um, it has some great appeal to it, some great uh, uh, design cues to it. But I think our particular customer that we're reaching is more of that um, urban um, the person who lives in the urban settings, I will tell you, I've had one for about nine months. I have two um, two older kids um, and two dogs, and we can pack all four of us in there, and we can take off. Uh, we can do whatever we need. Um, my son and my daughter are both athletic, so we're carrying gear all over the place. Um, and I really find it, it it's um, it's a uh, it, it's a very nimble vehicle. Fits perfectly in uh, in my lifestyle and my ability to kind of whip it around downtown and where I need to go quickly without having to worry about its size. Can, can I put the second row seats down? Uh, absolutely. You can put the second row seats down. And in fact, you can put the first, you can put the passenger seat fold flat. Um, and what's unique about the, the second row seating is that um, we have a 60, 40 fold flat. So it means that on the one side, on your left hand side, it is a 60, it's 60% of that seat folds flat which allows for an incredibly eight, uh, 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 a long width to go from the back of the car all the way through to a fold-flat passenger seat. You can easily get an eight-foot board in there if you want to put anything that long um, and carry it in your vehicle. The reason I ask that, of course, my friend, is that I have five dogs. And so uh, <laughs> folding that you got second, me by three. Yeah, well, but you also got two kids, which I have an adopted kid who just graduated college, which makes me very happy. But at the same time, congratulations. Right, thanks. Uh, at the same time, it's very, uh, it makes me smile that uh, there's enough room for those five dogs. Now, I, I noticed, which is exciting, you know, you can still get your skis and that sort of thing in, but I also noticed that some things that come out of the higher end Buicks uh, is going to be, uh, are in this vehicle. I love the camera mirror, which was the the first mm-hmm. one. Uh, I Avenir, the on, uh, the Enclave Avenir is where I experienced that. Uh, so the ca- that sort of technology, which is in the higher end vehicles, is also filtering down into this uh, GX. You know, and and um, I think it's a great feature, and I think it's um, in some respects it's underappreciated. When we move to you know when we go to these big vehicles, um, you know the larger full size SUVs. 
Um, we need an inside rear view mirror because oftentimes we're stacking um, gear in the back of the seat in the back cargo area that goes all the way up to the roof, which impedes your normal rear view mirror. And so the rear view mirror camera, though, allows puts the camera on the outside of the car. And you actually improve your vision by about 150%. So you can see part of, when you look into your rear view mirror, you'll see um, about half of your right lane, half of your left lane, and you'll see everything in the lane directly behind you. How does that relate to a small SUV like an Encore GX? Oftentimes, we put people in the back seats of those vehicles. And, in, uh, and if you don't have that technology, when you look in your rear, rear view mirror, you're basically seeing their smiling faces. With the rear view mirror camera, you click the button and you can actually see everything behind you. Um, it's, it's really convenient and very safe as well. I love the fact that uh, you have made this vehicle very user friendly. So you can order pizza from it. You can find a gas station, pay for your gas, and you can also find parking. I might actually never have to get out of the vehicle. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the car does also have uh, rear park, uh, excuse me, um, automatic park assist. Um, I will tell you candidly, I do pride myself in being able to park the vehicle. Uh, but um, I've also seen in certain situations where people are challenged by parking. And I think this uh, really kind of addresses their need. Um, it'll parallel park. It'll also perpendicular park your vehicle. It actually helps you find the spot um, as well. So really nice feature um, if you're uh, in an urban setting and really need a, your challenge to find a parking spot. It's very embarrassing when your kids get close to driving <laughs> age and you can't park a bit. I just, I, I'm glad that I'd have never been challenged like that. But then when you try to teach your kid to parallel park and you can't do it, that's that's a little, yeah, that's a little and, embarrassing. Yeah, and you know, if I could just touch on that. So I do have two kids that are of driving age, just like you have one. Um, and as a father, it is potentially one of the most nerve wracking experiences of teaching somebody how to drive a vehicle. And you become you become accustomed to um, you know pulling out and backing out, and I think this vehicle has some outstanding technology that really help new drivers. Um, the most important, which I think, is um, rear cross traffic. It's a very simple feature. It uh, has sensors on the back bumper, which can identify moving traffic or nice. people from about 40 feet to your right or to your left. Nice. And also inside the center stack, it has little um, guide rails that show you the direction that you're turning your car and where your car will be. So not only does it warn you if somebody's coming, but you can also visually see yeah. if something is in your way. And for new drivers, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And for fathers teaching new drivers, I think it's reassuring. Thanks so much for being on the show, starting at $24,100. Stand by, more to come. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Catch up with previous episodes of the show at our website, ourautoexpert.com. You can hear all the past shows, see automotive videos, and read insider car stories about your next ride. Our Auto Expert is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. You'll find it all at ourautoexpert.com. I uh, used to work at a farm when I was knee-high to a grass. When I was young, when I was younger, when I was your son's age, no, probably 10 years below your son's age. Uh, I was in my late teens, mm -hmm. my, my, my medium to late teens. And one of my jobs used to be to go down to the hen house and grab the eggs. And they had lots of hens. They probably had uh, 50, 50 hens. So I'd go and get the eggs every day. I used to run the farm store and a couple of other things. But the hen house was way down the other end of the farm. It was on a hill. So I'd have to walk all the way. And walking up with all those eggs was just, you know, things would happen. Yeah, cow, I know. There was we used cow have, mess everywhere and this sort of thing. We used to have so I used to take the farm vehicle and drive down to pick up the eggs and uh -huh. then drive back uh, mm -hmm. with all the eggs in the back in a big basket with some straw in it. It's very, very, so you don't break them up very romantic, them up. very young farmhand type ish. <laughs> but I used to drive a Range Rover. <laughs> it was uh, it was like a 1974 Range Rover, I think. Very um, cool. Which is you know. Well, no, wait, this was in England, right? Yes, I grew okay. up in England, Jen. What, what gave that away? Well, no. Was it the Union Jack face mask I have on or I the accent? I didn't know when you moved to the States. I moved to the States to go to college. Okay, there you go. Your parents young. just followed you? Yeah, uh, No, they, they moved to Canada first. I went to college in Canada, then moved to the States to go to college. Oh, okay. Went to okay. medical school, right. Northwest Medical School. Yeah, the more you know exist, about right? Nick Miles. Don't ask. Don't ask <laughs> 
Joe Starwell is joining us from uh, the Public Relations and Communications Department at uh, Land, Land Rover Range Rover because you're celebrating 50. I do feel a little bit old now, the fact that you guys are celebrating 50 years because I've grown up with the brand. But I guess it's a milestone, isn't it, with Range Rover? It's a great milestone. Thanks for having me on today. So we're so excited to be celebrating um, the iconic Range Rover and 50 year anniversary. Um, and it's just such a wonderful time for us at uh, Land Rover. I uh, saw a picture of the 50th anniversary version, which I cannot find for some reason now. But it was in that light blue color. What do you know? What that off the top of the head? I probably should have prepped you for this. But do you know what that color is called? The light blue color. That is called. That's called Tuscan blue, and that's one of the original colors when we first launched uh, Range Rover back in 1970. Uh, that it was offered in. Um, so the Tuscan blue is actually going to be one of the the available colors that are uh, going to be uh, available for the 50th anniversary edition. That was the color of the one I drove in 1974. That's Good so color. Cool. I'm it, just impressed with the snow art. Did you check it out? Yeah, that well, is beautiful. So you guys are you you're sort of doing a bunch of stuff around the celebration of the you know 50 years, the 50 years of the Range Rover. One of the things that was nice was you did this snow art in the Range Rover that was just taken. First of all, I get very sad when I see uh, ice sculptures and snow art because it's so beautiful, but then it snows again and ruins it all. (laughs) (laughs) That that was actually up uh, at our driving school in uh, Sweden. So there was a great opportunity to uh, produce that and it really kicked off the celebration that we had for the 50 years of Range Rover. I have been to the Montreal. I drove uh, Land Rovers in Montreal before that we have done, but you, you and they drive amazingly in the snow. Here's a great story for you. I had um, a Discovery LR, I guess it would have been LR2, equal to the British, but Discovery 2, and we had really bad snow when I was in uh, Happy Valley, which is a small town outside of Portland, Oregon. And I took nobody could get to work. It was snow we don't usually have. I lived on a hill. I took the police officers to work in my in my oh, Land that's Rover awesome. that's because they couldn't story. they couldn't get to work. So I took them all to work, and then they got to work and they they had, you know it would be like an hour and a half to on, answer a nine one one call. However, and they should have all had Land Rovers, which I know the UK guys do. And I uh, obviously when I worked in U- UK, uh, we had all had Land Rovers, but. But in 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 the U.S., uh, they don't drive Land Rovers, so they couldn't get to work. They couldn't get to nine one one calls. It was one of those days. Anyway, that's a subplot to this. What does the fifty? So tell us a little bit about this fiftieth anniversary version. Sure. So um, it's uh, the Range Rover fifty. Uh, so that's the official uh, moniker and badge for it. It's based off of a Range Rover autobiography spec. So fully loaded, um, and every luxury and convenience feature that you can imagine is pretty much stamped on the vehicle. Um, what makes it unique is, again, going back to uh, what you just dis- discussed about um, the paint colors. So um, there's a series of paint colors that were only uh, available on this particular uh, vehicle, um, and that includes three original paint colors. So the Tuscan Blue, Bahama Gold, or Davos White. Nice. Um, and those are custom uh, paints that um, are going to be only offered in very limited editions. So even though this particular vehicle, uh, we're only producing 1,970 globally, um, these particular paint colors are even more exclusive. So we're really excited about that. And uh, if you uh, encourage your, your uh, listeners to go online and to take a look at uh, the Tuscan Blue that you have referenced or yeah, uh, the other Bahama Gold. Yeah, it's it's so unique and so special, and um, it's the heritage that only Range Rover could really offer. And you've maintained so, you've maintained over those fifty years superiority in off road as well. I mean, I've driven this from Arizona to Montreal. These vehicles just re- maintain their superiority. Uh, we, we have an internal phrase: uh, capability with composure. Right, so we're able to go wherever we need to go and the most uh, with the most composure. Let's let's. Uh, put it that way. <laughs> okay. And it's just, just a legendary uh, product, and it's evolved over these 50 years uh, into the vehicle that we see right now. It's awesome. Is it available? Do I have to order it, or will dealers be stocking it? Uh, so for this particular vehicle, uh, I would encourage your listeners to go down to the dealers to place an order. Um, we're internally joking uh, that we should 
pool our money and buy one of these vehicles in the Tuscan blue because it's an instant classic. 30 years from now, when yep. everyone's looking for one of these vehicles in an auction, um, we can only assume how, how coveted they're going to be. No, I, I totally agree with you. Hey, listen, thank you for giving up part of your weekend telling us about this vehicle. I w- I'm going to have to go down to uh, Land Rover of Oregon and just test drive one, which is my closest dealer, uh, because they're really amazing looking. Out. I will remember that blue color. Joe Starbolt, thank you for joining us from Land Rover, Range Rover Public Relations. Go check the vehicle out online or on our website, ourautoexpert.com. You're listening to the Our Auto Expert Podcast. This is Our Auto Expert Radio Show. You can turn your smart speaker into a radio station. Just say, hey, Google, hey, Alexa, or hey, Siri. Here we go. Well, my phones are going off now. Uh, just tell them that uh, Our Auto Expert, you like it to pay the, play the radio show. You'll have hours of endless fun. I'm Nick Miles. This is Our Auto Expert Radio Show, where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. And some of that news coming from an independent analyst and investor, Anton Wallman. Anton, there's an awful lot on the list. Let's get to the business uh, insider story about Tesla in just a second. But just to also recap the Tesla, although not officially in the J.D. Power Initial Quality Awards this year, uh, they were ranked the bottom of the list. Surprises or not? Not surprised at all, Nick. Uh, keep in mind that Tesla is the only auto brand that does not cooperate with J.D. Powers in the sense that they do not give permission to access their customer data uh, for J.D. Powers. So J.D. Powers had to go out and uh, basically get a hold of their customers anyway. That's how this came about for the first time. In previous years, you may recall, Tesla was simply not even on the list. Uh, J.D. Powers basically said, look, we just can't get the data. So this is the first time that they uh, felt comfortable enough to have enough data to put them on the list. And, of course, they were uh, dead last at the bottom. So that's how it happens. 2.5 complaints per vehicle or 250 complaints per 100 vehicles. Let's talk about uh, the Business Insider story. It sounds like back in the summer of 2012, Tesla knew they had a problem with their cooling system. Yeah, so the battery system inside the Model S was basically a very convoluted thing where all this glycol-type uh, liquid needs to be flowing through the battery pack, and uh, their engineers at Tesla were saying, look, this is very brittle. Uh, it, can, it can fail for any number of reasons, you know, bending, you know, temperature, you name it. And when it does, then basically this glycol or similar substance starts to... Um, Uh, leak into the batteries and that could uh, cause or or for that matter exacerbate a fire and it's a major major safety hazard but as the internal documents show that business insider were able to um, uh, uh, obtain from the sources at tesla they uh, they basically uh, were overruled by management saying look uh, we can't we can't have a recall on this we can't redesign this is too late if we don't deliver this car now uh, the company will fail so the company uh, have been shipping the cars. So that's what happened. What's going to come of this? Is Tesla going to find themselves in trouble? Well, so far, any safety complaint against Tesla uh, related to autopilot, full self-driving, uh, collapsing suspensions, you go down the list, the long list of issues that have caused a large number of accidents and, and fatalities, none of them have thus far yielded a strong response by any of the regulatory bodies that exist in the United States. This point, my hunch is that we will see nothing from this. I could be wrong, but that would be my guess as of today. All right, let's talk about Volkswagen. The first batch of 30,000 units of the ID3 uh, happening in September? That's what they're saying. So the ID3 is, of course, they're all electric from the ground up platform in the Volkswagen group. It's called MEB. MEB is the platform that will underpin a variety of vehicles from Skoda, Sia, Volkswagen, and Audi. And uh, they started making these cars last November. Software is ready. And they were going to deliver these cars right around the beginning of the year. And then they said spring. And then, then they said early summer. And then they said midsummer. And now, I guess, technically, September is still summer, although at the very tail end of it. So uh, people are starting to wondering whether we can actually believe this or not. And that's a big issue because Volkswagen obviously has stake 
a lot of its future on this. You would think that sooner or later they would get the software to work, but uh, uh, thus far, uh, the evidence is scant, and the company has missed uh, numerous timelines. All right. Uh, Volvo uh, Polestar 2 is supposed to be shipping cars in China this week, or Volvo, Volvo's Polestar 2 was supposed to start sales in China this week. Where are we with that? Yeah, so the Polestar 2 is a Polestar, which is, of course, Volvo's high-performance division. Um, that, that is a vehicle that thus far is the closest thing to a Tesla Model 3 or a Tesla Model Y that has hit the market. The manufacturing started in uh, March, and the deliveries in China were supposed to happen in just the last handful of days, and we're just now awaiting some evidence that this did indeed transpire. These cars are um, arriving or were arriving over the last week or two uh, in ports in Europe, and deliveries should begin there within 30 days in Europe, and then uh, the U.S. is probably toward the end of August. So that's where we stand, but this is very important because if you look at a vehicle that is as close as possible in length, height, width, you name it, to be in power and overall features to be competing with Tesla Model 3 and Y, this is the first and closest. And uh, after this, it would be something like a uh, uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E, which won't really be delivered in the U.S. until maybe about December time frame. All right. Uh, there are several truck manufacturers in the United States that are brand new, including Rivian and uh, Nikola, uh, also Lansdowne Motors, I think, in uh, Lansdowne, Michigan. Uh, the Nikola is ca- truck company is about to start taking deposits for their pickup truck on Monday or Tuesday. What do we know, and how is it going to be distributed? Are they going to have a new dealership network? What do we know? Yeah, so here's the thing. They, they showed a picture of this a little while back, this Badger uh, truck, which will come both in a battery electric version and in a hybrid battery electric slash hydrogen version, which has something like 600 miles worth of range. The most interesting part here is you have to really wonder how are they going to get to market with this thing, both in terms of manufacturing, distribution, and service. And the company has said that before the third quarter is over, meaning September of this year, they're going to announce a major manufacturing service and distribution agreement with a major automaker. At this point, we have no idea who it is. Maybe it's FCA, maybe it's a Toyota, maybe it's somebody else. But they're going to show this and start taking deposits, supposedly, right on uh, the beginning of this upcoming week, on Monday, the 29th. So uh, there's a, some chance that we will find out some further detail at that point. But uh, this could be very exciting. We just, uh, you know, at this point, the company has basically 90 days to prove that its word is good, and uh, we're, we're all ears, as Rob Crow would have said. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, Ford um, and the F-150. So we're going to be talking to Perry Stern in a moment or so to get some in-depth t- discussion about that. But uh, the new F-150 was announced. Uh, it seems that uh, that assuming you know they are going to have a very uh, easy run of this production, deliveries on, on this vehicle is going to happen sometime later this year? That's right. So Ford unveiled the F-150, and uh, first of all, I think the truck looks absolutely magnificent. I mean, uh, straight from the front or in profile, the face of the car is so important. The company made no mistakes here. I think it's absolutely beautiful. In terms of the interior, the company had one mission, number one, and that was, like, first of all, catch with the Ram 1500 in terms of interior design and quality. And I think they may have done that. They have really examined the, the vehicle in person and question. I think uh, there's still a tiny question mark, but I think largely they got there. And then their final mission was to deliver a, a bunch of new uh, nifty features, and I think they definitely met that target. A new laptop table size, seat that fold 180 degrees flat, and this power I'll take in the back where you can take out 7.2 kilowatt worth of power for all sorts of power tools. But, Nick, also imagine what the RV and camper market. You can actually use this as a almost shore power for your camper, so you could be pulling something, feeding it with power uh, all throughout, which is going to open up a whole new set of possibilities for what Ford can do in the RV and camper market. Uh, so I think that'll be very exciting. And imagine when they uh, also introduce that functionality in the transit van and the transit van chassis sometime down, down the road. It could give Ford a leg up in, in the, the camp camp and RV business. And we have to wonder this type of functionality. Why did Ford or anybody else earlier. This technology has been around for quite some time, and it seems so obvious in retrospect now that to see how it can be uh, deployed. 
And I think also when you think about the massive jump in COVID cases, nobody is really wanting to travel outside of their own state or get on a plane right now. It's sort of putting a dent in uh, travel and especially uh, abroad vacations and a lot of people looking to the RV market to vacation. I think Ford might have a lot of people snapping up those vehicles, uh, trying to stay out of traveling abroad and vacationing at home. Let's uh, turn our eyes to FCA. They have confirmed at the annual shareholder meeting that a plug-in hybrid version of the Jeep Wrangler will make it to the U.S. by the end of 2020. Uh, what uh, what else looks like it's on the horizon for them? Yeah, so previously we knew this thing was coming. In fact, it's delayed because manufacturing was supposed to start back in January. It got delayed a couple of months, and then, of course, everything got shut down. I think manufacturing is about to start here imminently, if it hasn't already. And uh, uh, the idea was that they were going to potentially sell it for the first year, mainly to Europe, where they have a very significant target that they have to meet. And what came out of this latest information from FCA is that sales in the U.S. is going to start a little earlier than we had feared. We had feared that we weren't going to get this vehicle until well into 2021. Looks like they are aiming to, uh, uh, they're aiming to deliver this vehicle in the U.S. Uh, already before the end of this calendar so that's good news, I think. It's very good news for FCA. Anton Warman, he's an independent analyst and investor. He, uh, he, You can read the majority of his stuff at Seeking Alpha or The Street, and he joins us every single week to talk about the state of the car industry, the state of the vehicle industry, and taking a look at how some of those electric vehicles are progressing. Always has his hand on the pulse in Europe and finding out what's going on in Europe. And, of course, it's trickle-down economics because what happens in Europe tends to reflect what happens in the United States six months, a year, two years later. Uh, don't forget, you can read all of the features on these vehicles. You can also see the television segments that we produce. And, of course, listen to previous episodes of our show. It's uh, OurAutoExpert.com is the website. Go there. You can also direct messages on all of the social media outlets and see some or all of our social media posts, which, of course, includes our videos, some of which actually contain Anton Warman, so you can see what he looks like in person, up front and personal. Uh, coming up, the F-150. We'll take a deep deep into that. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Your smart speaker can be your radio. Just say, hey Google, hey Alexa, or hey Siri, uh, play Our Auto Expert radio show and all the previous experts work. Is it? <laughs> See, every time you do it, you know all those people at home there. So I have to do it again. Hey, Google. Hey, Siri. Hey, Alexa. Play previous episodes of Our Auto Expert or play Our Auto Expert radio show. You'll have endless hours of fun. That's all you need to know. Uh, Perry Stern is joining us. You can read all of his stuff just at Our Auto... No, oh, just a moment. I Stand right. Auto oh, yeah, 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 of course, because I try to turn you off. Um, <laughs> oh, there, I just took a picture. Uh, yeah, we're having trouble with technology. It's because we're old. <laughs> Perry Stern has no trouble with technology because he's young. Uh, Perry, uh, you got to witness the Ford F-150 reveal, uh, which was done digitally because of COVID-19. And uh, it, what, what's your initial impressions of the new truck or the refreshed truck? Uh, I'd say it's, it's pretty impressive what they've built into this thing. Uh, I mean, you know, the F-150 is the best-selling vehicle, or F-Series at least, the best-selling vehicle in America and has been for, I think, almost 40 years. You know, and that's not just truck, that's everything. So it's, uh, it's popular. And they're looking to make it more popular. I mean, they've got, you know, a definitely updated styling. In fact, every body panel on the new truck is new. And I would say they've sort of refreshed the front with a, with very little, like, uh, mistakes in it. When I go to look at these refreshes and uh, look at how they, you know, how they put it together, they've made very few, like, errors, obvious errors uh, that a lot of people see when you see vehicles. They sort of seem to have got it right. No, I think it looks really good. Um, you know, I like the LED uh, signature lights, you know, that you see at night. Um, they actually have, I think, 13 different grills, depending on which trim level you get. So there's going to be kind of a look for everybody. Uh, but more so than the styling, it's really the features that they added that really makes this truck stand out. Um, I think one of my favorites is the onboard generator. So, you know, a lot of construction companies or, you know, if you're going out to the campsite, 
uh, if you really want to have power out in the middle of nowhere, you got to load a generator into the back of your truck. And now with this one, you can actually have a 7.2 kilowatt generator that's built in, runs off the engine. Uh, it's got four outlets plus a 220 outlet built into the bed of the truck. So you can actually run a construction job out of the back of your truck. It's actually worth having that input in your new truck, and then if your power goes out at home, running the cables into the house. <laughs> Just, Absolutely. You know, I was that was, that was the first thing I thought of, actually, <laughs> when I thought about this. It's like this is the perfect perfect vehicle to have in a windstorm. <laughs> Uh, the one thing that I like, uh, you know, one of the things I always look is is how these vehicles are used for emergency services and that sort of thing. And one of the problems with uh, some of the vehicles that are used for emergency services, especially the F-150 police vehicle, is you have to put such a high tower in the middle for the mobile data terminals. Uh, but they've sort of overcome that now because you can now get a laptop in here uh, with the space because the shifter is is folds away, which I thought was very clever. I'm trying to see the issue with this, whether it would break or fail or, you know, whether you'd have to pack everything away before you drove off, which clearly you would have to to pull the shifter up. But it seems like they've thought of those things and made it fairly user friendly. Exactly. I mean, I think it's it's a pretty cool idea when you think about it. The, the shifter actually folds by the push of a button. So it's not it's, you know, and as a lot of people say, you know, it's just one more thing to go wrong, and sure, it's possible, but I'm sure they've tested it. But once you fold the shifter down, you've got the center console that you can fold a flat surface into, and you have a table that you can use for your computer or for lunch or whatever. And the interesting thing is that it makes it, because the shift is folded, shifter is folded, you can't drive with all your stuff out. So right. it makes you put everything away in order to actually start going, which I think is a safety feature as well. You know we're lazy, right? We don't want to put everything away. <laughs> I know, and that's why they have to make you do it. <laughs> yes. I, I guess I, policing me is probably the best way to get me to do the things that I should be doing. Uh, I, right. But if you are lazy, there is, you know, they do have the fold flat seats also now. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, forget first class and, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, airline. I mean, this thing, you can fold the front seats completely, uh, almost 180 degrees flat and take a nap after you eat lunch on your little table. That's what I love. There's there they also have a, a sleeper cabin, you know, a sleeper seats in the vehicle as well. Exactly. Exactly. So it's it's uh it's a pretty cool feature. And so I mean that's that's the most interesting thing I think about the this generation F150 is they've they've looked at what owners are doing with them and yeah. and yes, they had to make it look fresh. I mean, that's part of the deal, but it's more important of what they put in it. But the other big news is that this F-150 will be available as a hybrid. Oh, that's a, so this is the biggest news because, you know, at the same time when you use your truck for towing, you, it'll be able to switch over mostly to the gas engine. But with a hybrid, when you're just tootling around town and not, you don't have a load, it actually works very well. It does. In fact, they've, you know, they haven't given us the actual, the full specs yet. You know, that's going to be closer to on sale, which is this fall. But they say it will be able to deliver about 700 miles of range on a single tank of fuel and will be able to tow up to 12,000 or at least 12,000 pounds. Um, so, which is for a, a, you know, half ton light duty or heavy duty pickup, or I guess it's a light duty pickup. 12,000 pounds is a lot. Yes, and they obviously, when you go out the gate with these vehicles, they uh, you have to make sure that they outdo all of the competition. Do you now? One of the biggest things about the 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 Ram fifteen hundred has been these big screens and the amazing interior, especially in the Longhorn. Do you feel that? Uh, and all the other two, especially Chevrolet with the Silverado, were clearly way lacking in their interiors, and they updating their interiors early for that. Do you think Ford's interiors are now going to outpace Ram? I think they're on a par with Ram. Um, and I think, you know, this is when it comes down to, you know, if, if you like Ram, you'll, you know, you, that's what you go for. But the, I mean, the F series, I think, you know, they definitely brought up the interior. I mean, really nice materials. They've got uh, a much larger screen. Uh, so it's, you know, it's similar. I mean, so I think it's what a, uh, 12 inch touchscreen display, something like that. Um, that you can split up into different features so right. you can have your audio in one section and your towing information in another. Uh, and, of course, because they have so many different trim levels, you can get fully loaded with the soft leather and the heated seats and everything else um, You know, to get it almost to the point that's like a luxury vehicle. 
And of course, most people now uh, want to use their vehicles for absolutely everything, not just for going to work and hauling stuff and going to the building site or going out. I mean, these vehicles, a huge percentage of these vehicles are used by the railroads and gas and oil exploration around the U.S. I mean, a big chunk of it now, of course, they make the pursuit version of the F-150 for police departments. But at the same time, people want to use them for absolutely everything, not just uh, hauling, but also taking the family out at night. So they're obviously thinking about that as well. Uh, do you think that this is going to keep Ford in the number one position, which is, of course, the key question and the key thing that they want to do? I think they are so far ahead that they could have made this thing uglier than sin, and it still would be the best-selling truck in America. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> you can always read Perry Stern's stuff at OurAutoExpert.com and at MSN Autos as well. Uh, very entertaining, and you can read the stories about the F-150 and some of the other vehicles. He's always got two or three standing out a week. Perry, thank you for joining us on the show. Of course, you can go back to the website and listen to previous episodes of the show. At the same time, you can also be entertained by some of the videos and read some of the best stories in the industry. You've been listening to Our Auto Expert with Nick Miles. Find all the show episodes at ourautoexpert.com. Please follow us on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Our Auto Expert. And message us for a quick and witty response. 